chapter, or still in the 17th chapter, we're looking at verses 11 uh, to 19. And this is a story that we all know very well, and as I mentioned to the children, it's Jesus cleansing the ten lepers. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this, uh, this scripture. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Now this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I was in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota for a uh, uh, seminar on preaching. And uh, one of the sermons that was given uh, was over this piece of scripture. Um, it was the only one that actually was given over to any of the lectionary readings for the week, uh, which I thought was interesting. You would have thought that the, 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 the speakers that were giving the sermons might have followed the lectionary, but the only one saw fit to do that. And the sermon that was given was along the lines of, of the way this is preached quite often. And it's talking about this, these ten. You've got ten that are taken care of. And it's interesting, I will throw in as an aside, this is, I believe, the only place in Luke uh, where someone other than the disciples calls Jesus Master. That's kind of interesting. But these ten cry out Master. Um, anyway. um, and the angle that, the, that the, 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 uh, the minister gave on this was talking about the, the nine leaving and the one coming back. And then the reference was made that many times, now this was predominantly a gathering of Lutherans, so you know, you should have been praying for me that I spent three days surrounded by, by Lutherans, but not, that's another story. Um, anyway, I hope that some of you laughed at the bad, but at uh, any rate, um, the point was made about the, the in confirmation, she used the, 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 uh, the, the reference to confirmation, but we could use the, refer the same reference to baptism. But this number was about, about right. About of every 10 people that go through confirmation, one of them comes back to church regularly. And we could use the same number of baptisms, but probably about one out of 10 of the Baptist baptisms that we do, that person becomes a regular church attender and comes back and, and regularly uh, worships with us and comes back and prostrates themselves metaphorically at the feet of Christ. And this bit of scripture seems to work towards that end pretty well, um, but I don't think that's what this scripture is about at all. I think that's a very accurate thing, and I think that's a very worthy sermon to give, but I don't think that's what this bit of scripture is about at all. Um, so we'll look at this from a different angle. Um, we have 10 um, people. One's different than the rest. These 10 people all have leprosy. So as I told the children, uh, it wasn't an option. You've got leprosy out the door, out of the village, out into the wilderness. You're removed from society because this is a terrible disease and it's very contagious and they don't really understand you know, contamination and, and you know, cont contagions in that in that time, but they do understand that you don't want to be around people that have this, and for whatever way it, it, it manifests itself, you, you've got to remove the people from the population in order to get a handle on this and to, to, to get away from it. So these 10 lepers are out, they're outsiders. They're outside the walls of the city. They are calling to Jesus from a distance, and they are keeping their distance. They're honoring uh, what is required of them by society of not approaching Jesus and they cry out to him. Um, these 10, and I'll back up just a little bit, it says here that Jesus is passing between the region between Samaria and Galilee. Now when you look at the map, you've got the north, you've got Galilee, and then you've got Samaria, and then you've got 
Judea, Judea below the, with Jerusalem below that. And so Jesus, would, if he's going from Galilee, the direct route would be to go through Samaria. But as many commentators point out, there really isn't a region between Samaria and Galilee. They're bordering one another. The, you know, literally you take one step and you're in Samaria from Galilee or from Galilee from Samaria. There's not a region between the two. So the thought is that this isn't, this isn't so much a geographic thing as it's a theological thing. But this, this, this area between Samaria and Galilee. Because remember, the Samaritans are that remnant of, of ancient Judaism that, that during one of the early exiles, the, the Syrian, I believe it was a Syrian exile, um, they were left behind and they intermarried, and now the Jewish people don't associate with them and they worship in a different mountain than, and, and all of that. So they are, they are, are the lowest of the low. And remember, I've told you before about Khalil and Shammai, and Khalil and Shammai talking about who is your neighbor. And in, in Luke's gospel, we have the Good Samaritan, right? And who is the Good Samaritan? Well, or who is the Good your Neighbor? Well, Khalil said, the most liberal of, of rabbis, said that everyone is your neighbor except the Samaritans. So the Samaritans are the worst of the worst. And so this is that area between the Galilee, which is looked down upon by the rest of, of, the, of the Jewish population as well as being kind of a backwater and kind of a hick place and wrong side of the tracks and all of those metaphors that we use. And so you've got this region and you've got that region. And so Jesus is going between these two regions that are, that are kind of looked down upon, but really especially Samaria, because Samaria just doesn't, the Samaritans just don't wait in any way, shape, or form. And so he, he, he has these 10 people cry out to him and they want they want healing and Jesus says go to the temple and show yourselves to the priests and they take off there's one one problem there there's you've got ten outsiders that are that are now nine Jewish people and one Samaritan that are together because of their common affliction right but there's one of them that now that they're cured still has an affliction in the eyes of the other nine. And that's the Samaritan. Because now those old divisions that went away under a, under a, a, a common affliction, that old division is back. No longer are you welcome with the nine. And guess what? You've been told to go to the temple and show yourselves to the priest. Do you think a Samaritan could walk into the temple and approach a priest? Guess what? A Samaritan wouldn't even be welcome in the court of the Gentiles, which would be the outer court of the temple. They wouldn't even want them there. They wouldn't even want them in Jerusalem. Now, they might go there, but they certainly are not going to step a foot inside the temple. And they certainly are not going to approach a priest, because to do so might end up being the end of their life. They may end up being stoned. So what we have is this one that can't go to the temple. He can't present himself to the priest. So rather than looking down on those nine, the nine are being, in, in many senses, are being faithful. They are doing what they were told to do by their master, by the Lord. They're going to the priest. They are going to be brought back into society because that was the, that was the, 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 the uh, process. That if you had leprosy, now leprosy was, you know, they didn't have any way to diagnose things accurately. It could be any skin affliction in that time. And some skin afflictions pass on their own, don't they? So there were sometimes people got something going on and they went out in the wilderness and they got better. And then they could come back in and have to go in and go through the process of showing themselves to the priest. The priest would say, you're healed, make your sacrifice, and you are back and you are reunited with society. Well, that Samaritan had no prayer of being reunited with the society that he was never united with in the first place. And so what is this poor guy going to do? He sees he's people. I can't, you know, as I'm going along with these other guys, you might be thinking, well, we're all lepers and we're all together. We're all one together. 
Now all of a sudden we're all healed, and these other nine say, hey, take a hike, buddy. You're a Samaritan. You can't come into this temple. And he knows he can't go into this temple. And all of a sudden he doesn't even belong in the, in the, in the realm of outcasts. He is the outcast of all outcasts, farther out there than anyone now. Because until he shows himself as a priest, Jewish people aren't going to include him back. Of course, they wouldn't include him anyway because he's a Samaritan. And even the Samaritan people aren't going to include him back in because he, they, as far as they're concerned, he's a leper. So what's he going to do? He has one and only one option, and that's to return to the one that healed him. And so he goes back to Jesus. So I think when Jesus says this, you know, where were not the ten clean, but the other nine, where are they? I don't think Jesus is saying that as, a, I think that's a rhetorical question. I think he's a, it's a leading question. It's to make us think. And if we were in that historical context, it would make us think because we'd realize, well, wait a minute. He's a Samaritan. He could, he could go to the temple anyway. But we are so far removed from that that we look at it and we think, oh, well, 10% of the people, you know, stay in the faith and that's about right. And so we preach that out of this so many times. But I don't think that's the point at all. This is a point about inclusion. This is a point about that Jesus doesn't care how broken you are, how far away you are, how much society looks down upon you, how much you are the outsider, how much... You are the dregs of society. Jesus just flat out doesn't care. He healed him because he loved him. And he let him, he came back and he worshiped at Jesus' feet. And of course, that is one of the big theological points of this, is that it is also those nine went to the old temple, right? Where did the one go back to? The new temple. And Terry is mouthing. And that's the important part. That's the point that we need to remember. Because guess what? We're all Gentiles. I don't think there's too many of us here that have a whole lot of Jewish blood. Uh, probably not anyone that can track their Jewish heritage all the way back through the mother's side, which would make you therefore a Jewish person. So all of us here are Gentiles. All of us are just as uh, out much an outsider uh, as the Samaritan. But all of us can walk back to that the feet of that new temple and praise God again. Please, God, let us all do so. So as we go forth from here, let us remember that, that we too should present ourselves to the temple because just like that, that with those lepers, we are unclean and we are fallen and we are outsiders and we are outcasts and we want to be included. We want to include everyone and we should be just like Christ and love that man, even though he was the drag of drag. Until he had presented himself to the priest, he couldn't come and, and present himself to Jesus and, and bow down at his feet. But he did. He came, and Jesus let him. Earlier, Jesus touches a leper and heals him. So let's not be afraid of those that society would tell us to be afraid of. And let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of the, of the ten lepers and, and the one that is the Samaritan Lord. Uh, forgive us when we, when we look down upon people because of of, of where they are from and who they are and, and that we somehow feel that we are superior. Uh, Lord, let us, let us open our hearts and open our, our lives and, and love each other, dear Lord, and understand that no matter who we are, no matter whether we're the Samaritans or whether we're a leper or what, that Jesus loves us, he wants to heal us, he wants to make us well, and he wants us to come back to him, your new temple. We pray this in your love and your glory.